Hey, what's up, guys? I'm James, also known as Just Some Nerd, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I made the belt gizmo for my Ghostbusters costume. Easily my favorite thing about doing my Ghostbusters costume is all of like the cool gadgets and stuff that they had, uh, you know, like the trap and the proton pack and everything. You know, the trap and the pack are kind of what most people remember, but they had a lot of other little gadgets on their uniforms too that they use at different points in time in the movie. One of those is what fans have come to call the belt gizmo. And this is the thing that they wore on their belt that looked like a circuit board held on in a little leather pouch. The original screen used ones were actually a calculator from the 70s that they just popped the top off of and added a few other little greeblies and stuck it in a leather tape measure holder. These all got destroyed during filming and in the part two, the ones that you see them wearing are just a little piece of rubber that's kind of painted to sort of look like a circuit board. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to combine a lot of different little techniques here and I'm going to try to build this you know, totally from scratch, mostly with things that I kind of already had laying around. We're going to do some 3D printing, we're going to do some 3D modeling, we're going to do some two-dimensional designing, uh, we're going to use some found objects, and we're going to use some stuff that's created by other designers that's already out there online for you guys to download and uh, do this stuff yourself. I have links in the description to all the stuff that I use so you can download your own if you want to build this yourself. So the first thing I did when I decided I wanted to build one of these was I got onto Thingiverse and I kind of checked out everything that was available on there that had to do with the, the belt gizmo. And there are a whole bunch of models on here with different parts of it and you know different people's versions. And I printed pretty much all of these to kind of see what parts I thought worked best for what I was going to do. And ultimately what I decided that I was going to do was mix and match parts from a couple of different models as well as having to model a few parts on my own to get them the way that is right for me. I knew that I wanted to use this design for the circuit board. This graphic was created to you know, look just like the circuit board from the you know, antique calculators that were used in the movie. And so you can print this out onto sticker paper and use this as a label to cover whatever material that you use to make it look like that circuit board without spending $400 on eBay on an antique calculator. So the way I went about doing this was I took the PDF into Adobe Illustrator and I created a vector outline of the circuit board. Once I had converted it to a basic vector shape, I exported that as an SVG file. You can then bring that SVG file into Fusion 360 and extrude it into a three-dimensional shape. I'm not gonna release the 3D files I made for this because they're kind of a mess because I'm not a very good 3D modeler, but this was not really that difficult to do and you should not have any trouble doing this on your own. For the part to hold the Nixie tubes in, I used this model by Windrake off of Thingiverse, but in order to print it as simply as possible, I took it into Mesh Mixer and made one cut across the top so it could print into two pieces flat with minimal supports. For the Nixie tubes, I just designed a really simple cylinder shape in Fusion 360. And I printed that out with a transparent, clear PLA filament. I printed these in base mode, or what Cura calls spiralized outer contour. And what that does is print it with just one outer perimeter, and that helps with the transparency a little bit. I know that these aren't going to be completely transparent. I really just want them to be there to diffuse the lights that we're gonna put behind them in a minute. While we're finishing up the printing, I'd like to take a second to tell you guys about some of our fundraising we're doing. My group, the Ghostbusters West Virginia Division, every year we do a big Christmas toy drive and we go out and get Christmas gifts for kids in less fortunate situations. And we want to be able to do that again this year, but in order to make that happen, we need your help. Right now we have a Tee Public store with a lot of really cool merch. So if you guys are interested in supporting our charity, we'd really appreciate it if you would go to our Tee Public store and check out our stuff. Okay, so here you see I've got everything that I printed laid out. Like I told you guys, I, I printed like everything on Thingiverse that related to these. So what I did is I just laid everything out on the table and this was when I kind of went through everything and decided which parts that I was going to use. Which is basically just the circuit board, the little microchips, and the front part to hold the Nixie tubes, and of course those Nixie tubes that we printed in the transparent filament. So once I set everything aside, I started to clean up all the pieces that I was going to use. For the circuit board, obviously I'm going to use the label that we printed out earlier, but I wanted to go ahead and put a coat of paint on it too, 
mainly so that the sides would be green and if there were any parts that the label didn't cover quite right. I painted the little microchips gold. They're going to have a little label on them too, but I wanted it to look like little copper wires coming out the sides. The Nixie tube holder needed a little bit more cleanup than the rest of the pieces. I glued the two parts together using a 5 minute epoxy and left that clamp for a little while. Once the glue was dry, I filled in the cracks with some filler putty. And then I hit it with some spray primer, did a little bit more sanding, and then painted it satin black. I carefully cut out my labels with an X-Acto knife. I applied my stickers being really careful to avoid air bubbles. Here's a tip for when you make labels and things like this for cosplay. Take some clear packing tape and put it over the top of the labels. Not only will that give them a glossy, almost laminated look, but it will also help protect them from water damage. Once I had all the labels put on my 3D printed pieces, it was time to glue them together. For this I used super glue, but to make sure that the glue would stick, I took my X-Acto knife and I scored that tape a little bit so that the glue would stick better. I had my reference pictures out beside me while I was doing this to make sure I got everything in the right place. I had this old circuit board laying around that I'd ripped out of a CD player for another project a while ago, so I decided to use these little wire clippers and harvest some of the parts off of this, and I'm just going to glue those in place too. As I mentioned earlier, I'm going to add some lights to this, and the way I'm doing it is super simple. I just have this LED rope light that I'm going to stick behind my Nixie tubes, and it's just going to shine through them and they're going to diffuse that light. And I'm just going to super glue all of this in place. And I'm also going to use a little dab of super glue to hold the Nixie tubes. So here's where we're at, having glued together all the 3D printed pieces, added the labels, and I had the lights in place. Now using just a little dab of hot glue, I've cut a bunch of little red wires that I'm going to have coming out of the Nixie tubes. I know this isn't super screen accurate, but I'm just kind of piecing together little bits of wire and things that I have laying around. And like I said, I'm just using a little drop of hot glue to hold these in place. I am certainly not an expert with wiring things together, so I'm just kind of winging it really. Uh, I used a little dab of hot glue to hold my wires together, and then I'm just wrapping them with electrical tape. This is really just like the second time I've ever done a project with LEDs in it, so I'm just kind of stumbling my way through here, and I'm definitely not an expert. <laughs> So if you have questions about this, I'm probably not going to be very helpful. Here's my test of the lights and they work and I think they look really good and you know it's diffusing the light just like I hoped it would. Okay so now it's time to make the pouch and I, I said earlier that the ones in the movie I think were made out of a tape measure holder that they just painted black and a lot of people do that. They just buy like a leather tape measure holder and and cut the straps up a little bit and then paint it black. But I decided I wanted to kind of go the extra mile on this because I wanted to learn a little bit of leather working. So I just bought some leather and I'm going to make my own from scratch. Going back to the same site that we got the circuit board labels from, uh, they also have a great pattern for cutting out the holster. So we're going to download that, print it, and cut it out and use that as our pattern. This pattern is great because it also shows you where all the snaps and rivets need to go. To color it, I'm using a leather dye I bought at my local craft store, and I'm using a sponge to apply it. I'm going to do several coats. I'm going to do one coat up and down, and then the next coat left and right, so that there's no splotches. And just keep doing more coats until it looks even. I got a little bit of water on my sponge so I could wet the back of it so I could fit it to the shape that I want. As a little extra strength, I used some contact cement to hold the pieces together. I think the rivets alone would have been fine. This was just kind of an extra step, but I don't think it's hurting anything. Now I'm ready to slip the circuit board into the holster and see where we're at so far. It's looking pretty good. Just a little bit more to do. To attach the coiled cord, I'm just gonna use a little bit of hot glue. For the daughter board, kind of in the spirit of just taking the front off the old calculators like they did in the movie, I found an old radio and I just took the front off of that and I'm going to use that for now. And to connect it to the daughter board, I'm just going to use some electrical tape and tape it to an old headphone jack and just plug it in. This is something I might go back and replace later, but for now it's great. The last step, I'm going to use a little bit of hot glue to hold the battery in place. All right, guys, I think we're finally done. Let's check it out. All 
All right, so there we go, guys. I know that it's not really super screen accurate, but I wanted to, you know, make this with a, you know, make this from scratch with a lot of things that I had laying around, and also kind of learn some new skills. And I wanted to do that instead of like buying an expensive kit that, you know, was probably really awesome and you know super screen accurate and everything but it's putting a lot more money into it than what I was looking to do here. I am planning on making another one of these soon based on the version from Ghostbusters 2 that I was telling you about that was just kind of a little piece of rubber painted to look like a, uh, a circuit board. Uh, the version I'm gonna do is kind of a more idealized version rather than a screen accurate version because I'm not gonna be as hard on it like running around like they were filming the movie. So I don't have to worry about it breaking quite as much. So if that's something you guys are interested in, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the little bell button so that you're notified when new videos come up. I'm gonna post some photos of this on my Facebook page. So I've got all the links to my social media down in the description if you guys wanna follow me on there. And so I'll see you guys in the next video.